thank you. Thank you very much, Brando. Uh, this is Manoj. Uh, 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 just to introduce myself, uh, I'm part of CareSoft and uh, handling the North America uh, customer relationships for uh, our customers. As, as Bando mentioned, uh, uh, we have been working with Care so uh, with ProPlanner for many years now and uh, uh, supporting a lot of customers, uh, theirs and ours in uh, automotive and ag and construction and uh, tier one space. Uh, so uh, as an implementation partner, uh, we have the biggest user base of uh, uh, ProPlanner users. So today we have structured uh, the session in a way where we will just spend a couple of minutes uh, to showcase uh, what CareSoft is, uh, what we do, and then uh, deep dive into how we use uh, ProPlanner, uh, the different modules like assembly planner in process planning, where it helps our customers to seamlessly uh, integrate uh, different data points uh, from the process planning perspective where they don't have to jump into different softwares or different databases. It's one point solution where the information flow from uh, engineering bomb to manufacturing bomb to uh, logistics from a PFP perspective. Uh, so that's, that's an area which we will cover. And also we will be covering uh, uh, how 3D virtual assemblies uh, uh, gonna help our uh, uh, customers. Uh, in launching new products uh, where they don't, they don't have to go to a, a CAD system to see the CAD and uh, uh, it will eliminate any surprises which can come during the actual implementation of the product. So uh, starting with uh, our uh, high level, uh, what CareSoft is all about, uh, uh, we, were, we are engineering and a product company. We were founded in 2007, headquartered in Detroit. Uh, we, uh, a global presence, a majority of our presence is in continental Europe. That's our biggest uh, area. Uh, US uh, is another biggest market and uh, we have our, our offshore centers in uh, Asia. Uh, we are ISO and ITAR certified as we work for uh, certain of our clients which are in defense. Uh, so that's how we are structured with a good global presence. Uh, from a business uh, perspective, we have uh, four pillars uh, from our technology, digital twin, uh, benchmarking and cost reduction, which is uh, which we do for automotive space where we benchmark different cars and, and help uh, different OEMs to save, uh, uh, be competitive or, and uh, save cost. We have our own products and basically in the design space. Uh, and then we have our engineering solutions where we, myself, Krish and LK who are on this conference belongs to. We are from our manufacturing domain, uh, which helps uh, our customers to uh, launch new products or uh, do continuous improvement pro uh, uh, projects. And this is where we use ProPlanner a lot and which helps us to uh, manage the process planning documents, launch new products, um, uh, uh, handle uh, the logistics designs for our uh, our our customers and clients. So uh, uh, we will be deep diving uh, in further slides how uh, Pro Planner helps us uh, doing this uh, from a process planning or assembly planner perspective, and also how we are using the three D virtual build uh, to help our uh, customers uh, uh, to launch their uh, new products uh, more efficiently and effectively. So I will hand it over now to Krish, uh, I think uh, who will uh, take over and uh, go through uh, the uh, process planning portion of from our assembly planner perspective. Krish, you there? Can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you now, Chris. Yes. Okay, good morning. Um, I think that's a small glitch in my mic. Um, to quickly introduce myself, I'm Krishnamurti Singhote and I'm based out of Chicago. Um, I, I come from a strong 20 years of uh, manufacturing background, working in various verticals within manufacturing. And uh, um, I'm with KSR for the past six years. Um, I would now like to uh, get into the presentation. Uh, 
um, um, I'll switch on the video so that you can wish, you know, see the slides uh, much better. Okay, so customization is the key mantra in today's business environment. Right. So the USP of any business is the possibilities for a customer to customize the product configura configuration faces their needs. So this level of product customization creates extreme complexities in the manufacturing environments in terms of multiple models, options, and various combinations. So in the next 15 minutes, uh, I would like to take you through the major pain points for manufacturing organizations and how we are able to solve the pain points using ProPlanner as an integrated manufacturing process management system. And we will also talk about and deep dive into uh, the 3D virtual assembly uh, you know, uh, module that we are supporting. So um, I would request please park your questions at the end of the session and we can uh, help answer all your questions at the end of the session. Talking about the MPD documentation, so we develop and maintain standard time at elemental level by defining activities which include time, work steps, resources, like toolings, quality, information, work, workstation information, consumption, and we finally map against the model and options. So we use most MODAPs or MTM based on the customer preference of PMTS. Uh, this is the baseline for creating line balancing scenarios so, uh, based on the customer pool and eventually the SOPs are published to the floor using shop floor viewer for the use of workforce. Now, talking about the ECRs and ECOs, so with significant disruption happening in technology, product design goes for a constant optimization or change to adopt newer technologies or improvements, enhancements. Right, so this again creates a need for a constant upgrade of the manufacturing systems, manufacturing um, support systems like material feeding and other, um, you know, download documentation processes and systems. Engineering change management system plays a vital role in handling these changes. Now, ProPlanner Pro as an integrated system comes very handy in managing and implementing these changes. So we use engineering change management system within assembly planner to handle the ECO changes at the process level and support the logistics changes as well. Assembly planner can communicate with ERP system to capture the changes in BOM and customer order data. So in the engineering change management system within assembly planner creates automatic alerts to changes in BOM so that appropriate changes can be made in the system. I would say we define and maintain the process data in a three tier structure, like routing, operations, and activities. And we then associate and update time studies, resource requirements, part consumptions, and external documents. And more in the, you know, um, it could be in an assembly process, it could be in well logistics or any functional area within a given manufacturing organization. So, um, Again, uh, pretty much it depends from an organization to organization that could be um, standard assembly process. It could be a discrete process as well. So uh, depending on the type of the configuration, product configurations, we, um, you know, we, we support using ProPlanner. And um, uh, again, the changes, uh, it, it's very imperative and important uh, when the changes are triggered, it reaches to the respective functions and people are able to work on that and make sure the engineering changes are implemented on time and the old parts are purged out of the systems. So that way, um, you know, the, the, uh, the new system comes, new parts comes in place and systems are kept uh, clean and healthy. So, uh, so, so from that perspective, ECR and ECO management support has been crucial and we are uh, supporting our key customers using ProPlanner as a main system. Now, Moving on to the uh, next slide, uh, I would like to give a quick insight on the 3D virtual assembly. So 3D virtual assembly is a new module in assembly planner, which increases the speed and quality of launching accurate work instructions and line balancing scenarios to the shop floor. So at this time, I would now invite, I'd like to invite LK. So LK has extensively worked on the 3D virtual assembly uh, module, um, you know, with, with ProPlanner 
and also uh, he has tested several use cases as well and uh, i would uh, now invite lk to uh, present the 3d virtual assembly portion so can you hear me yes you can okay. you can go ahead thank you krishna uh, myself lk lakshmi khan i am working with proplanner using proplanner software from last 10 to 11 years now so i will go through this virtual wheel features as of now so virtual wheel features is the integration of the product process bomb or the components that helps in weaving parts in the 3d visual graphical representation the prerequisite before doing that we have to map the bomb and the consumption through ECO or ECR, or if any new model comes or options are introduced. So we document all these things using our pro planner like routing operation activity. Within activity, we define the bomb. So uh, using this virtual build module, how we work is. So there is a concept of workspace that has been introduced. So you can create a new workspace or you can work on open workspace and then you can see the process tree, the consumption grid, and the 3D viewer integration of all three in one screen, where you can now view your product and process in a sequential order as defined. You can, when you start clicking on this process one by one, you will see your model is getting built on the right hand side as it is progressing. So we are using this for planet 3D. What you can do is you can introduce the 3D concept in this view and you can add your parts onto it. Can you go to the next screen? Basically in ProPlanner virtual build, you have multiple CAD views. So you can work on these CAD views uh, by on and off, doing on and off. Uh, those CAD models. Next day. And there is an image ed editor on it where you can have edit multiple images at a time. You can align multiple views on same canvas, customize annotation, you can add your callouts, your notes onto it. You can integrate them and then you can save this image. Once you save this image, what will happen is it will automatically go to your activity. Next screen. So here you can create a, this is image editor. You can take multiple snaps. You can sequence them. Then you can drag and drop into the image editor and you can create your recipes at one screen. So basically what this virtual build helps is, is as is, it integrates all the product process and bomb together into one screen where you can use your graphical, graphical representation to create your activity. Next screen. So basically the benefits of using this virtual build will be, it is the ease of creating the work instruction. It is the ease of processing the issues because once you create an issue, then later on the maintenance of issues become easy. You can just open your uh, existing workspace. You can go edit your bomb and your work steps and you can create, recreate your new images based on the new parts. And you can see uh, the progress you build of the uh, work order or instructions or sequence of activity at one go. So that is the main features of virtual build where you can play with new product introduction. You can. Uh, create the complete list of sequence of activities and you can view how your model is getting built activity by activity you can analyze and you can modify as required thank you krishna you can take over yeah thank you lk so moving on to the next slide um, let's talk about the uh, the MUDA analysis, uh, MUDA and ergonomics. So in today's manufacturing environment, be it automotive or ag and construction business, 
So there is a constant need to focus and to improve productivity and efficiency by eliminating the non-value added activities in the process. And especially in a complex environment where there's multiple models and options where the work content varies from model to model, it is very important to understand the non-value added activities so that the line engineers can focus on these, those areas and specifically work on uh, continuous improvement. Again, when I say this, so how do we get the data? So Pro Planner helps in slicing and dicing the time uh, you know, again, all the codes and categorizations are built within the system. Uh, every customer, we understand every customer has different codes and structures. So those uh, codes can be customized based on the customer requirement. And once we run the scenarios, um, we will be able to, uh, you know, pull out reports and, uh, you know, from a, in a Pareto perspective on the non in NVAs, non-value added activities, semi-value added or business value added activities and value added activities. And we all know that NVA is the uh, key area to focus to improve uh, or eliminate the waste out of the system, right? So uh, Pro Planner helps in churning out this data and publishing the reports. So um, what we do is we on the back end uh, work on maintaining the health of the system. So we do it both at on-site and also we virtually manage things. Um, and, and we support customers so that the, the, the floor engineers can focus on, uh, you know, uh, Gemba-based case and improvements. And similarly, um, we also support on the uh, MURI analysis. Again, MURI has a nine-point standard MURI, and also there is a 17-point seven, empowered MURI, which are in, built within the system. So um, where we can, you know, uh, at an elemental level and activity level, we can uh, pull and map the scores and generate the motion count to see the scores of activities and identify potential areas of improvement. So once the chart is, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, published, then we know which, uh, you know, which all activities fall under level three MURI. And those are the areas that would need uh, an improvement. It could be, uh, Ma, you know, um, manipulator that would need to help improve uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, the ergonomic, ergonomic level of an operator or it could be any other manufacturing support system that is needed. So uh, Pro Planner constantly helps generate this, uh, you know, changes and whenever there is a, a small case and that is uh, implemented and seen sustained in the manufacturing environment that can be again updated. So the system is always dynamic to show what is actual and that, uh, you know, uh, for various reasons, it could be for uh, the internal process improvement, internal uh, uh, plant safety improvement, or, um, you know, making sure that plant is aligned with the uh, plant KPAs or from all those perspectives, um, this information helps and um, uh, uh, you know be it at an activity level or a sub assembly level or an assembly level okay so next uh, most important uh, aspect is the line balancing line balancing is very critical again in a mixed model production environment and uh, pro planner supports heavily in handling the line balancing scenarios especially when a take rate changes right so when a volume change happens then there is a need to rebalance the line and that is where Pro Planner comes handy. So um, since the systems are uh, pretty dynamic, um, uh, you know, we, we, we support to uh, rebalance the line and we run MSME charts. So MSME shows um, which are the specific stations that needs work on. If there are like 15, 20 stations, you don't need to work on all 15 stations. You need to know which are the two stations or three stations where activities are overflowing. Then knowing that you can focus on the specific activity and move chunk of activities to an, uh, you know, uh, either a previous or a subsequent station. That way you can balance the line and then also plan for a optimal manning of the production line. So, from that perspective, uh, you know, Pro Planner's uh, line balancing uh, helps in maintaining the health of the manufacturing process. And uh, from coming talking about the mass update, uh, Pro Planner as a tool has the ability to mass update and helps save a lot of time and effort when we need to update activities to map new models and options. Finally, talking about the uh, you know PFAP module. 
again we spoke a lot about the assembly uh, planning module equivalently the logistics based pfep module is equivalently important um uh, now as we focus on the process side of things uh, the line side material presentation is important as well so pfep module helps define locations for receiving storage and delivery it helps generate a kitting list based on specific units on assembly line and it also also helps in generating tickets based on the usages of kanban and e kanban helps track part sorts shortages as well um so again uh, if we uh, have a let's say there is a machining um, a discrete process and um, you have to have a focused improvement project then um, we can generate man machine charts if it is like a single unit exchange of tire smith kind of projects then generating man machine chart um uh, you know helps in getting to know the specific areas where there are uh, pockets of you know, opportunities for improvement and uh, you know we can categorize into mission time pallet time and manual activities etc and then we can see what all activities can be moved from internal to external so that the machine availability can be improved and um, from a quality standpoint um, you know a pro planner module is built with the uh, pfme strongly and uh, again when you have a pfme integrated into a manufacturing system then you don't need to necessarily separate a, uh, ma maintain a separate uh, documentation for pfme because it is already integrated and then you will be able to map against the process and Uh, when we uh, finally come out with the rpns on the severity occurrence and reduction then the rpn numbers tell when it reach, reaches a threshold of say 80 or a 90 score then we know these are the top 10 activities in a given assembly line uh, that needs focus in terms of uh, developing an uh, you know process pop or you know process control element be it an uh, uh, preventive mode or reactive mode pop up so that uh, piece is also integrated within pro planner and that way i would say you know it's it's a complete um, one place one integrated system which takes care of the industrial engineering piece process engineering logistics and quality as well so um, these are the you know i would say the few critical aspects from a pro planner standpoint i know there are several modules and uh, features available in pro planner but in our experience um, uh, we have we have we spoke about some of the critical aspects that we uh, partnered with the pro planner and we supported with you know uh, supporting multiple customers in ag and construction space and automotive as well so this ends my last slide of presentation now uh, we would like to open the forum for question and answers and we'll be happy to answer if there is any specific questions Just a reminder to everyone that you're able to raise your hand if you have a question, and we can unmute you. But for now, we do have one question from Sanjay asking, "How does virtual build module work with larger assembly files?" Um, and the example they gave was an entire car assembly. Okay, myself will say. I will say. Actually, what happened is these CAD modules are there. so this cad modules can be converted into prc and hsf files the size of these files are very less half of it or one tenth of it of actual jd so it enables you to work on the heavy equipment also does that answer the question If there are no questions, yeah, LK, can you? Maybe, I, I would like to see if you can answer. If you can just put a few words on uh, the number of steps that reduced with the having the virtual build uh, inside of Pro Planner compared to uh, what you were doing prior. Uh, just a brief description would be good. Okay, we said. Actually, prior to this virtual build, what was the scenario? Is we used to work in multiple. Uh, applications uh, for process one application and for 3d we were using different applications we used to have that application to create our sops then we uh, save those sops and convert them then import into the pro planner so this step is uh, 
reduced drastically. And the second step, what we're used to there is, with this integration of workspace, uh, the issues, creating of the issues and maintaining of the issues time will reduce drastically. So I can see these are the benefits using the virtual build. Major benefits. I apologize, I was on mute. We do have one raised hand from Jonah. Jonah, you have been unmuted. Um, if you'd like to speak and ask any questions you may have. Uh, yeah, I, I came in a bit late to the conference here. So maybe you've talked about it earlier, but I've listened to all of all, all, all of the last uh, half hour or hour or so. The, the, the CAD import or inputs or lightweight formats, of course, but, but you, uh, how do you get the whole structure in correct with uh, with uh, Pro Planner? I mean, the the the, the CAD boom uh, could have a different structure than the 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 boom that you have in Pro Planner and so on. Uh, yeah. is, is it difficult to ensure this? I mean, you have do you have to do a lot of preparation to get the three D viewer correctly synced with the CAD drawings? Yeah, there is two way to answer. If there is a vehicle integration team is there who usually structure this CAD data into one complete structure of the JT. So this JT, if you insert it, it's very easy to use it. You can convert to lightweighted and insert and you can work on. But if you don't have a structured data, then you can activity by activity, you can import this our data and work on the activities. Is that answered your question? Uh, yeah, somewhat. I don't know if, uh, is it normally well structured so that they, uh, that you can Yeah, use normally the... it is well structured because for every plant, there will be a vehicle integration team who works on the structuring of the CAD data. As an end user, we just take that uh, well structured JT and put it in the CAD module uh, into the pro planner and work on those in the virtual right. way. Yeah, okay. But but there, there is still normally, I mean, differences in how the, the CAD boom is structured compared to what the manufacturing boom in, in, in Pro Planner would be, right? Yeah, it is structured a little bit differently, but uh, in Pro Planner, what happened is they have built some queries which integrates this uh, M bomb with this CAD bomb, and you can work on it. And if you like, Abhishek, you can add. Yes, some more. I can. I can. Johan, I can answer to that. So what we are doing in um, uh, in, in in the virtual build module is depending on the type of extract, right? So it could be a, as LK was mentioning, a JT file or a um, you know some other format. A 305 from some some CADs software, we we do have to spend some time in analyzing the data inside the CAD. Um, in in this particular implementation with CareSoft, uh, we were able to we had to do that analysis and then connect our bill of material data, MBOM part number, MBOM information, uh, with a certain field inside the CAD file, right? So that's how we related that. Okay, this particular part number in Pro Planner uh, is you know, is found in this field on the CAD, uh, in the CAD file, right? And that's a very simple step, which is mapping our part number to the corresponding field on the inside the CAD data. Once that relationship is done, uh, then we are able to easily search through the CAD and find the part numbers we want. Now, you're right that, you know, the structure of uh, the, the bill of material on the MBOM side or the manufacturing BOM and Pro Planner may not be one on one with what how the CAD data is structured, right? Uh, and as LK was mentioning, you know, typically there are teams that try to bring that close, but it may it need not be one to one. So our our search, our focus is to start from the end part numbers that we have being consumed in that activity, find them in the bill of material structure of the CAD file, and display those, uh, you know, display those in that particular view. Right. If we have a level in MBOM, let's say some kind of a part grouping that was created for consumption purposes, that's missing in the CAD. That's fine. We don't we don't 
find that part, we skip it all together, but we focus on the part numbers that we found and, and we display those. So end result may be that in the CAD file, I may see a much bigger structure, a much bigger assembly than what my particular activity is focused on. But the, you know, the, the, the idea here is to, is to show the, the user, the, the end consumer, what those parts are and how they are oriented, right? So I think the structure differences between MBOM and CAD are typically done, are typically based on groupings that are introduced in the MBOM for the purposes of manufacturing, right? But the overall structure usually, usually you know, the, the, the high level assemblies usually don't change much between MBOM and CAD. So I think to answer your question, we're going yeah. through the part numbers in consumption and finding them in the CAD and, and putting them up. Okay, sounds good. All right, we have time for one last question here quick. Um, they don't have a name, but with the username XA634, uh, you've been unmuted if you'd like to ask your question. Just one moment, please. Can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I have two questions. One is um, our CAD here is uh, Creo, and then we take it to the next step, which is Team Center, and we have to baseline it so everything is aligned. Is that uh, with virtual build, we're going to be able to eliminate that? Uh, Team Center package and just go directly to Creo to Pro Planner. Mm. Actually, Hello? from JT, what happened is uh, you can still go ahead with the Creo or from the JT model. From JT model, you uh, there is a Pro Planner software onto it where you, that can convert the JT model into PRC or HSF file. And this HSF file or PRC file can be imported in the Pro Planner and then you can work on. Okay, so no need to go to Team Center. We can go directly from Creo to Virtual Build. Creo, you, you need to convert to the JT file, right? Yeah. I don't know about the step file to the HSF file. Uh, that yeah, I think everything can answer. Right. You, you can convert the step file to HSF or PRC and load that. Uh, I, I, but again, that it's a sim similar question as what Johan had asked. It's the structuring of the CAD. You know, what are you doing in team center engineering? Um, and I think team center engineering is trying to line up the CAD data closer mm. to the MBOM from, from your MRP system, right? So uh, that's, that's really the 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 need to go to a, an intermediate uh, engineering system like like team center but we you know if if the e bomb structure e bomb like what what's released from um, your engineering system and uh, and your um, you, you, your willow material structure are in sorry your your creo structure are are lined up together then we really don't need to go through the team center conversion Okay. But I, I would I would go back to to the need. Um, uh, I would go back and, and check what what else you're doing through team center engineering. I think you're managing your configurations, uh, your uh, your you know your option bombs through there, right? If I'm not mistaken. That's um, yes, that's part of it. <clears throat> the um, my second question is that you say we're gonna be able to store all these images in a library. Does that in image also include all the balloons and notes and instructions for yes. future edits? Yes. yes. So, so there are two ways of doing this. Um, one is what the approach that we've taken traditionally with, with uh, that LK was trying to explain. Um, you know, in there, we are going into an activity. We are, we are scanning the consumption of the activity. We're searching for those part numbers in the CAD file, and we're creating a view of the CAD file, taking a snapshot of that CAD putting callouts on it, uh, annotating it, saving it against the activity and publishing it to the floor as a static image, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's an image file at the end. If you, ever, if you were to ever go back to the activity and maybe change a balloon or change the orientation of the image or put in a new image, you are allowed to edit that view again, right? 
So it's not like once you create the image, you're, you're, you know, you cannot edit the annotations again. You are allowed to edit that view, change it and republish it. But you know, with okay. some, of the, some of the work that we are doing now, uh, we are trying to put in a 3D viewer on the shop floor. So rather than sending any image, uh, we, you, the user should be able to look at the CAD data that was published for that particular activity, right? So that gives the user more flexibility in, in you know, magnifying, you know, moving things around and, and turning and, and, and looking at the details of the CAD rather than a static image. So, you know, to, be, to answer your first question, yes, you are allowed to go back to the image and edit it and create a new snapshot. Uh, but moving forward, I envision that you probably want to move to something like uh, the CAD viewer that that gives the ultimate freedom to the, to the viewer on the line. Okay, thank you.